Welcome to the Merle End. I'm Dominic Machado, and I am joined by my cousin from across the pond, Mark Machado. If you're watching, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a follow. I wish I could say that with more energy, but today we are coming to you on a very, very dour note. Sri Lanka has just been eliminated from the T20 World Cup. Bangladesh's defeat over a defeat of Netherlands officially eliminates Sri Lanka, meaning that their final game on Sunday is going to be a dead rubber. Okay, so this is momentous news. We're all sad here, but Mark, I want to go to you first. How are you feeling about Sri Lanka's burnout at this tournament? I'm absolutely devastated and gutted um, about the whole thing. Um, what can I say? I mean, I, I know you feel quite similar to me. I mean, my emotions are directly linked to the um, to the performances of the Sri Lanka side. I came into it with high hopes, high ambitions. I thought we had a really good bowling unit. I thought if the batting unit could find a bit of form, I thought we could be a kind of dark horse, a surprise package. In this, I felt teams were underestimating us. I felt um, other journalists around the world who write about kind of cricket more generally were underestimating us. <coughs> All the data and analytical work, a lot of which you had done, Dom, and kind of suggested that might be the case. Turns out, absolutely not. Turns out, misread that New York pitch, um, which, all right, kind of happens. And then an absolute disaster, that Bangladesh game. You know, fool me once, fool me twice. And then the rain gods had it in for us in Florida. It's just not worked out for us at all, has it? Um absolutely no luck whatsoever bar Patton's kind of performance with the bat at the top of the Bangladesh innings absolutely nothing done with the bat at all the bowling I mean it's it's been good <laughs> like but they've had no opportunity to to kind of put their best foot forward because they've always been bowling at really low totals total 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 disaster um, it's hard to see any positives at all from it. All right. Well, you know, I, I feel pretty bummed. I was kind of resigned after we lost the Bangladesh match. And um, I saw the weather forecast for the game in Florida that this was the end of our tournament. Um, you know, I think thankfully Bangladesh winning here puts us out of our misery. And we can't say, oh, well, if it didn't rain off, we might have had a chance to qualify Nope, we well and truly screwed it up. There's no chance for us to make it to, there was no chance for us to make it to the next round. Um, it's disappointing. And I think part of the thing that's disappointing for me is the type of tournament that it is, right? This is a bowler's tournament. This is a tournament with low scores. This is a tournament um, that has assistance on the pitches. And then we're looking at what's going on in the West Indies, uh, very, very, very spin friendly. So this is a tournament that, if you kind of laid out ahead of time that these were the conditions, this is how it was going to play out. You would have said, okay, this is the type of tournament that Sri Lanka wants to be in. Um, differences with the bat have been minimized due to bowlers having assistance. And we obviously, as you said, have a great bowling unit. So this is a type of tournament where Sri Lanka would have seen themselves as a team that, would have backed themselves to get a par score and defend that par score with a good bowling unit. But that didn't come to fruition. As you mentioned, um, there was the mistake at the toss in New York and then just a bad game against Bangladesh. And that was curtains for our tournament. And it it feels kind of draining because we spent the last couple months since they finished their last um, bilateral series kind of getting pumped up for this World Cup, thinking about, okay, how are they going to do? How are they going to perform? Thinking are the conditions going to favor us what kind of tournament it's going to be and it all came crashing down in a heap um so we've kind of alluded to this but mark i really want to kind of get your sense so at the end of the day what do you think went wrong for sri lanka in this tournament and this is a question i think that everyone wants to know i think there's a lot of blame game being um doled out at the moment so tell us what your thoughts are on that we're what happened? So so I still think that, you know, kind of going into the tournament, I think we thought we had a fairly decent kind of shot at getting into the Super 8s 
and potentially if we work, found a bit of form getting into the semi-finals, right? I still think that's a kind of fair analysis. I think there's two things that really, really didn't help us this time around. Firstly, I think we just lost our heads, right? So I think there's fire in the belly. I mean, you look at it, and we're going to have to talk about this in the, later on about whether or not the players are passionate enough for it and it means enough for them because I know that's been brought into question with the kind mm. of shrunk, shrunk of fans and cross social media um, but I just think you see their performances on the pitch you see how much it means to them you look at Hasaranga right and the way he's you know he wears his emotions on his face right there's a number of other ones of our players who do teacher um, you know qu- quite a lot of them you can see how they feel from their body language mm. right um, but I think we kind of lose our heads way too quickly, right? We lose one wicket. It's not the end of the world. It's a cricket game. You've got 10 of them. You lose two wickets. Still got eight. Like, you lose three wickets. Our heads are gone. Absolutely gone. We saw that in both games that mm. happened and both games we managed to play. The other thing, which is a slightly less tangible thing, though I do think there is stuff that you can do to help it, is that we just had no luck whatsoever sometimes you need a lucky bounce here or there sometimes you need a a, a batter to hit a ball into their own wicket sometimes you know you you need catchers to to you know balls to fly one meter to the right to get a catch Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka just had none of that at all there's not one bit of play in those two games you go that was lucky that was lucky to the benefit of Sri Lanka yeah right um, I think of Kissel Mendes dragged onto his own wicket, didn't he? Yeah. One of the games, I can't remember which one it was now. Um, that is just pure unlucky, isn't it? There was yeah. a couple of other things with the bowling that I can remember from the Bangladesh game, really unlucky. A couple of times the boys got caught. When when uh, Matthews got caught against South Africa, I thought that was just un- like, it was really yeah. unlucky in a way, of the way the ball hit off his bat. It, it looked yeah. like it was a good... And then it ends up going into a, a, a fielder's hand, hands. He pl- dropped it right on top of a fielder. I mean, you should, you could argue you should have known the fielder's there. Whatever. But if you're lucky, that ball goes over the boundary for six, right? And he st- sits around and gets another 15 runs of the last two yeah. overs. And then you can kind of, you know, 15, 20 runs in both those games makes such a big difference, right? We just got unlucky in two games. I mean, there'll be a lot of Schlunker fans looking at this and going, you know, feel that that's a really unsatisfactory answer. But cr- cricket's about, it's fine margins, right? 20 more runs in that Bangladesh game and Schlunker win it. And we're yeah. not even having this conversation. We're having a totally different conversation, mm-hmm. right? Um, there, I'm trying to think of other other moments where Schlunker got unlucky. But I think the... A lot of cricket, international cricket, I th- I believe, is played in, in the players' heads. And I believe that there's a number of things we did before the tournament that weren't right. We are, are getting stuck for eight hours or whatever, however long they were mm-hmm. stuck flying to New York was a total disaster. But that was kind of three days before the game, so it shouldn't have been too much. Being Having to stay 90 minutes away from from the ground against uh, in a game that starts at 10.30, again, total Total disaster. Sleep so important. Not um, Hasaranga having to withdraw from the IPL and not playing any of it. Mm. Again, absolute disaster. He batted like someone who hadn't batted. Because he didn't bat at all, really. He hasn't batted at all. Um, you know, if he if he got to the IPL and got some runs, he would have had some runs coming into America before they got to America in the, in the most recent past. He'd, he'd be possibly a bit more relaxed. I don't know. I think pulling Paterana out, and I don't know that he's done the his injury, but if if he could have gone back mm. to the IPL, I think that's a mistake, right? I think we want our players any opportunity to play against top quality opposition, be that in the IPL or be that play for Sri Lanka. We need to take it. We need to expose them as much as possible. They need to spend as much time at the higher level as a higher level of playing cricket as they possibly can, pulling them out to go in training camps. If that's what did happen, is a total disaster. Mm. Was at what stage was Hasaranga fit enough to go to the IPL? Could he not gone to the IPL to play the last two weeks fit? Sunrises Hajbag got into the got to the final, right? Um and I think, you know, from that you can directly lead to a question of are we fit enough? Who's doing the fitness tests? Who's in charge of it? 
who's who's setting the culture, who's setting the tone, who's setting. We know that Hasaranga is the leader. We know we know which players in the squad he trusts. We know which players in the squad he wants to talk to. We know it's Matthews. We know it's um, uh, Deke Shadow. We know uh, we know the players he trusts. We know he talks to Crystal Mendes. He consults him, right? Are those players set in the right kind of culture? Do we have a winning mentality? Do our coaches have a winning mentality? Are they able to get the boys into the right place? Because I believe that there is match winners in that side. I believe that it's not just Vatsaranka. I think there's four or five players you can win the match, win a match with us with bat or with ball. And I just don't think we're seeing enough of that. And I think the players should be going away and thinking they've, they've you know, the performance that has come out of this squad for those two games isn't good enough. Sri Lanka is slowly, if we carry on this trajectory, we are ebbing away from that top table of cricket because we crashed out of this T20 tournament, World Cup early. We crashed out the World Cup, the 50 over World Cup last year early. We're not even going to be at the Champions Trophy next year. I mean, thank God we're one of the hosts in 2026. Otherwise, who knows if we'd even be there or what teams we'd have to play to get ourselves there. Um, and I think we need to have some injection of somebody in and around the cricket team who I don't think is in a playing role. We might need to buy this in from somewhere else who can really create a culture of winning and a culture of high performance because I do not believe at this point we have that. And I think that's the kind of key element that is lacking from our setup at the moment. What do you think, Dom? Yeah, there you have it. That's that's a, a pretty complete answer. You know, I think one thing I want to echo here is that professional sports is a game of slim margins. Um, and and I remember one of one of the coaches I used to to listen to in my youth always used to say, "You're never as good as they say, and you're never as bad as they say." So you're looking at the Sri Lanka team and you're saying, "Oh, they're crap." There, you know, I saw someone say this is undoubtedly the worst team out of all 20 teams in the World Cup. That's just categorically not true, right? Um, Sri Lanka did not have a good World Cup. And in T20 cricket, where the margins are even slimmer, where variability is even higher, where in a bowling friendly environment, competition is tighter, you're bound to have slip ups. That's going to happen. We saw that with Pakistan against the United States, right? We saw that with New Zealand. There are other good teams that are crashing out, right? Um, so part of the nature of T20 cricket and part of the globalization of T20 cricket is that there are going to be more close matches and you're sometimes going to crash and burn just because one bad thing happens, right? And I agree with you that there were circumstances outside of Sri Lanka's control, right? The New York fiasco, the amount of traveling that they had to do, um, injuries to the squad, those all negatively impacted their performance. The funny thing is, I think what went wrong for Sri Lanka in this tournament is what we would have expected to go wrong. This is, there's, there's nothing new that I learned from this tournament. And I don't think that um, any there are any quick fixes to this kind of stuff, right? So Mark was talking about, you, you talked about those, you know, 20 more runs would have made a big difference. I'm looking to the overs where we were playing spin, right? You think of, um, I think it was the eighth over, Keshav Maharaj comes in, right? When Indu facing a second ball, runs right past it, gets stumped. Very next ball, Sadir is bold. You got two and two. Now we're thir we go from 32 for one to 32 for four. And we're in big trouble. The next game against Bangladesh, we're in a much better position. We're 100 for three in the 14th over. Who's bowling there? It's Rashad Hussein, right? And Charith Asalanka tries to slog sweep him, holes out. Next ball, he gets um, he follows Hasaranga, gets him to edge to slip. Two and two. We go from 103 to 100 for five and then get skittled out for 124, right, over the next few overs. So quite frankly, our ability to play spin in the middle failed. And we noted that we haven't been great at playing spin. Basically, there are two players who you can really trust to do that. It's Kusil Mendes, who didn't make it to either phase of the inning, or he did. He just got out the next over in the um, South Africa game. 
and went into Hasaranga, right? And Hasaranga has faced three balls this tournament, all against spinners. He scored zero runs, been out twice. That was Sri Lanka's ploy, right? They expected to use him as a power hitter against spin to keep the momentum going, right? And I think theoretically that's a great idea. Right. But if he's your only option to do that and he fails, well, you're in big trouble. Right. And Sri Lanka could not recover from that. They expected him to do a job with the bat and he could not do that. And obviously part of that falls on what you were saying. He didn't have many runs under his belt. Right. And we knew this was the strategy when uh, was it playing against Netherlands? He hit some bowler for 30 runs in an over, one of the spin bowlers for 30 runs in an over and then got out. So. We know we were kind of playing on this high risk philosophy of if he can get us like 20, 25 runs in like eight to 15 balls, that'll be enough to kind of take us over the edge. Right. And in these tight scoring games and we just couldn't do it. Um, Conversely, in both those those games that we lost, the opposing team was able to do it. Um, We saw Hasaranga got tonked a couple of times by Claussen um, and he got hit for three sixes by Ridoy, right? And I think Hasaranga bowled pretty well, generally, right? But the fact that, you know, spinners will always go for runs, or they can always go for runs. He went for runs here, and we were not able to return the favor. We were not able to put their spinners under pressure in pace-friendly wickets, which we should have been able to do. So I see that middle over period as a, as a big issue. And we need to find a way to be proactive, to get better at that. Um, And I think, again, I want to emphasize the margins are fine. We don't know what would have happened if Pizzle Mendes had held on to that catch of Tristan Stubbs and Clausen had to come in a little bit earlier. We don't know what would have happened if, um, you know, Wanindu had done something different or if Pizzle Mendes had not edged the ball onto his stumps. So I want to emphasize the fine margins, but I also want to say that the the weaknesses that came home to roost, right, um, were weaknesses that we expected. One one la- one final thing is, you know, thinking about the fine margins. When I looked at this group, it was a tough group. I thought it's very possible for Sri Lanka to lose to a number of these teams or to beat a number of these teams, and that's where those fine margins come in. And one thing, and this will kind of move us to the next question that's interesting is Bangladesh is a team that we've kind of dominated um, outside of tournament play. When we played them in bilateral series, we've generally done well against them in T20s. We just won against them, you know. And But even if we're, say, 70-30 favorites, there is still that 30% of the time that Bangladesh will win. And as viewers, we can't just say, well, we should roll over Bangladesh every single time. That's not how international cricket works. They have skilled players. They have talented players. And their players did it, right? Rashad Hussain had a huge game. Tawid Ridoy had a big game. And they had those major performances. We got one from Potham and we got one from Nuan Tushara. We needed one more person to step up. One more person really steps up there. We maybe win that game. Okay, so... That's kind of what went wrong. I think we've 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 covered that. I'll ask one follow up question. There's been a lot of blame cast on Hasaranga, and I'm seeing on social media lots of calls for him to step down as captain. How much blame do you think he should cop for this flame out? Oh, that is such a good question, right? To me, that's the kind of million dollar question. Yeah. And actually, I think. Sorry, I lied. That is not the million dollar question. The million dollar question is what happens next with Hasaranga, right? Because Hasaranga is the franchise, right? There's no yeah. way, there's no two ways to look at it. He'd be the franchise if he only bowled, or he'd be the franchise if he only batted. Yeah. And he would near the ability that he was able to. He yep. can do both, right? So he's and he can on top of all that, he can't just kind of swing about a bit at the end or hold up an uh, a an end with the ball. He's a wicket-taking bowler who who is mm. a a high-scoring kind of T20 yeah. batter, right? So he's optimum, kind of he's three optimums, right? Yeah. Um, so I think there is a debate about whether or not they gave him the captaincy too early because, like, he's twenty-six. Yeah, are we now expecting him to be captain for the next six, seven, eight years? Right, at least till he gets bored of it. I think. 
when Angela Matthews got made captain in what 2015 or 20 mm -hmm. yeah maybe no 14, 14, 14 yeah 20, 14 I felt maybe it was too early for him only because I didn't think he was going to be a good captain because I think there's a whole the captaincy around a shrunk team in any format comes with a huge burden upon yeah. it in terms of where you are what it says about what your status is within kind of shrunk society almost we gave it to Matthews and it kind of ended up becoming a kind of noose around his neck, I think. And I'm really yeah. petrified that could happen with Hasaranga. I think, though, Hasaranga has a kind of higher ceiling mm. than Matthews did. Matthews gets a few injuries and it, you know, he, he loses his rhythm as a bowler and, it, and he's in and out of the team because of injuries and fitness or whatever. I don't think necessarily we'll have those kind of problems with Hasaranga. Um, but I do think you now, now that you've given him the captaincy, I kind of think you can't take it away from him. Yeah. And I kind of think we know he's the franchise player. We know that he's not the kind, he's, he's, he's a generational talent, right? He's not the kind of player that there's going to be other players you can replace him with. Yep. Um, so I think we've just got to back him. We've yep. just got to, the, the only other player Sri have had in a kind of similar vein, I think is kind of like the only person you kind of compare him to is Dilshan. Right, mm -hmm. in terms of somebody who can kind of do anything you ask them to do. Yeah. Um Dilshan was never really burdened with the captain. So I know he got it towards the back end of his career, yeah. but never in 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 the kind of like middle of his career. Mm -hmm. I like to think that with Hasaranga and and actually most of this team, I think we're still about three or four years away potentially from them getting any like towards the or we should be from them getting to their peak of their kind of cricketing mm -hmm. ability. Um I'm just slightly nervous if it's all too much too young because he'll be obviously that they're, they're, they're humans. Mm -hmm. He'll hear all the noise around it. He'll he'll be wanting to confront it. He's definitely passionate on the pitch. He'll definitely be feeling it. He'll be feeling. No one else is feeling the way we've crashed out of this tournament. The way he'll be feeling it, mm. right? If me and you feel bad, can you imagine how bad he must feel yeah, about absolutely. it? Um. So I just wonder if the mistake was giving it to him in the first, like giving it to him this young in the first place, it's inevitable that he was going to be captain of this side at some mm -hmm. point. Could you, but then you kind of get to, to the question is, so then who should have had it? You couldn't have given it back to Angelo. He's, he's yeah. at this stage of his career, his inclusion is too controversial. You've taken yeah. it off Daston, so obviously he can't have it. I mean, all the other bowlers are too young unless you gave it to Chimera, but he's kind of dealing with his own fitness issues and isn't a kind of, Mm -hmm. And at this point, I wouldn't say he's a definite 100% shoe in into the side. So then you're looking at Kusul, Mendes, Patum, or Asalanka, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, Patum's the youngest of the of all of the, the players we've talked about, apart from some of the, the bowlers, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, Charith, admittedly, did kind of captain the, the schoolboy team that Hasaranga was in, and I think mm -hmm. he captained under-19s. So yeah, he, he, did, he, did, he did captain under-19, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's it's inevitable that Charith will start captaining Shrunker teams at some yeah. point in the future as well, right? Um, and Kussel, well, you know, I'm not sure they're 100% convinced of, of Kussel as an ODI captain after the debacle of the 50-over World Cup. So I don't think they're about to give him the, this, the T20 captaincy. Yeah. So kind of, I suppose, in a way, he's got it because there's always no one else who's going to do it. Yeah. Apart from maybe Asalanka, but he's he's the vice captain anyway. He's like the next in line, I suppose. So I think the question is, Dob, is how do you rehabilitate mm. Wanindu? How do you bring the wow back into Wanindu? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a great question. I 100% agree with you that you can't take it from him, right? You can't give a young captain the captaincy and then say, oh, well, now he's rubbish. Let's get rid of him, right? Because what, you're going to dump it on Charis now and, and throw him into the fire? Absolutely not. With Hasaranga, right, he is such a talismanic force. I think that's one of the issues is, as I just said, we expect him to do a huge job, not just with the bat, not just with the ball, not just in the field, but as captain. And that is a lot of pressure, right? And maybe you can do it in the LPL, right? We saw him do that with B-Love. But the LPL, then, just to be honest, is a lot lower quality than international cricket, 
It's right? just not just not, not the intensity, right? And like, the pressure is not the same, right? Yeah. You, you know, if he, he fails his beloved captain, he's not going to get flayed a hundred different ways. Um, I think he has a good mentality to be captain. I think there are some things he's going to learn. I think one of the things, and I'll, I'll ask you this in a second, when it came to squad selection, and this is this is the critique I have of, of Hasarunga as captain. I think he's been aggressive. I think he's done his best. I think he's passionate. I think the team has played very hard, both against South Africa and Bangladesh. They gave it their all. Like you, you cannot question that they were there to win. But I think, how do you select the best side and get the best out of all the other players? Um, there have been some reports that um, Hasarunga really had his print fingerprints on the team. Who he included, um, who he excluded was basically a personal decision. And I think this is where a strong coach really matters. I think having a strong coach who's going to say, okay, Wanindu, we know what your preferences are, but this is really important for us to have this guy here because we see him playing this role. And that's where the coach can be the mediator. I wonder in all of this where Chris Silverwood fits in. Right. I'll tell you what, my, my solution yeah, is for all for of it. <clears throat> So I don't think Chris Silverwood, he might as well just get the plane from the Caribbean back to London. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any point, unless he needs to go collect his stuff. I assume there'll be some sort of review. He's had two really bad ICC tournaments now. I don't think, like, I think he's a great guy, but I don't think the SLC are going to keep him in that role, right? And I imagine he probably, probably knows that, right? Yeah. I'm guffed for him. He seems like a good bloke. Um, the play, from what I hear, the players seem to like him as well. So you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't. I hope you don't think this is kind of malicious me saying this, uh, but I basically think SLC should get on the phone to India and should ask Ravi Shastri if he will take the job because I think he's the only person in world cricket who I think would understand the the personality of Hasaranga and and the kind of talismanic nature of the role he wants to play and could play and could get the best out of him because we saw we saw that with his all conquered India side that went and won uh, a test series in Australia against the odds and uh, if he could kind of inject that kind of attitude into the Sharanka off we ain't, if we ain't going home if we lose we are like staying here and we are not going to lose tonight guys kind of attitude and if he can inspire the boys, I don't know how good his single is. I'm sure he can pick it up. He's a smart man. That I think Ravi Shastri for me would be my first pick. I imagine he's a very expensive man to hire. And <laughs> I have absolutely no idea if he has any intent to ever go back into international coaching or whether he'd take a job outside of, um, at, at, you know, whether, whether he'd take the Shrunker job. Because I'll be honest, I think for him, for a man of his, if his stature, it's kind of. You know, maybe he might consider the shrunken job small fry. I don't know. But I imagine Ravi Shastri never has to buy a drink in India. And can you imagine if he came to Sri Lanka and led us into a T20, a home T20 World Cup, and we went and really put a performance in? He'd never have to buy a drink uh, in, in Sri Lanka either, right? We'd all love him. Yeah. What do you think, yeah. Tom? Do you think, no, do that's you think a, he's that's the answer? Great. That's an interesting question. So, so if we're taking that analogy, we're we're basically comparing Hasaranga to Virat Kohli. So you're imagining yeah. him taking on that that fire breathing lion of a captain um, who sets the tone with everything. I think um, fitness would be an interesting issue, right? Because obviously, one of the changes Virat made was make that team extraordinarily fit from top to bottom. Uh, and gave them that never say die attitude. Yeah, and I think I think that's an interesting question. A call for Ravi Shastri, I think that would insulate him quite a bit from the machinations of SLC because obviously he has ICC connections and um, he has some some people who could kind of make it very very clear to SLC what the terms of his contract are. That would that would be interesting, and I think. Um, Ravi Shastri. Be, the, the other the other thing is, right, from a commercial perspective, I don't know if anyone at SLC even listens to this podcast, who knows? Um, but if he's involved, I mean, instantly the value of all our right of all our tours goes up in India, right? Because he's a massively mm. loved figure across India. So broadcasters yeah. would be falling over themselves to 
to put Ravi Shastri Sri Lanka on television. What about right. uh, the, I'll, I'll raise you. Yeah, MS Dhoni. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like I, I have no look. Obviously, I think he'd be brilliant, right? And we know there's a couple of players, at least, that he's mentored. Yeah, in the Shrunken team, who'd who'd be amazing. He, as far as I'm concerned, he's still an active player. It's okay. only a couple of balls at the end of an innings, so I haven't considered him. The other name I was thinking, though, I suspect, I don't know how it would work. Would be Owen Morgan, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he 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 took an, an England side that were in a much worse state than Schlunk have ever been oh, yeah. in, and he made them, made them kind of unbeatable, right? Um, and I, I think in Schlunk, he'd have much better player resources yeah. like, as a base, though kind of, you could argue that he wouldn't have the, um, some of the batting talent, you know, he, he had a yeah. good, a good vein of, of form, of, of batting form. For yeah. for his England white ball team that he maybe doesn't quite have the depth to have, but he has definitely more interest in bowlers with yeah. which Runker. So if you were to kind of bring him on and, and back him for a few seasons, then yeah. maybe it could be quite interesting to see that would work. I just think like my main my my number one kind of choice would be Ravi Shastri. Right. If he I don't again, I don't know how much it would cost. I don't know if he'd do it. Yeah. It's interesting that you, that you bring up his kind of relationship with the ICC. I think we'd almost definitely get more matches against India, yeah. which we know kind of pays for everything. Um though that said, we kind of almost play them every year anyway. So you're like, how many more times can we yeah. play them? Maybe twice a year, that'd be good. Um <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I think Mark, the thing that you're getting at is something that Anton said in the last um, pod, we need a brand of cricket, right? Because right now the players they're playing to save their bacon, right? To say to ensure that they're getting there for next tour. We need someone, and I think Hasarung is trying to do this. It hasn't quite gotten into the team yet because he's missed games because of injury, because he hasn't been captain for long enough. But we need that identity, right? Where and, th- and that's how Arjuna took us to greatness. Was this is who we are. Right. This is how we play Sri Lankan cricket. And we need someone to do that. Right. Silverwood seems like a great guy, seems like very helpful for our fast bowlers. But we need someone to take this talent and morph it into an identity. So I'll ask kind of a follow up to this. Right. Um, What do you think they need to do to fix things? Can they fix things before 2026? Um, I think they can fix things before 2026 because I think that that feels like a long way away, right? Um, yeah. It's not quite as long as you realise because I think that tournament's scheduled for February, March, right? Yeah. So it's actually kind of about 19 or 20 months away, right? Yeah. It's not a full two years. Um, I think the key thing is... So if you, I was, uh, when I was doing my prep for the match the other day, I was looking at when players made their debuts and stuff like that. And I went back through a few scorecards from 2016 and my gosh, that was a bleak time for shrunken cricket. Yeah. Right? They were um, so there was so far ahead of that. They're so far ahead of that. So far ahead of that. Yeah. I mean, you look at the 18 players that have gone out, it's not the squad plus the reserves. Yeah. And you're kind of like, yeah, that's pretty much like 18 world-class players, right? On their, on their day. 18 players who can definitely be playing in, like have proved out that they can play international cricket, right? Um, even that I know in the 18, there's a couple who, who are yet to debut fully um, in T20 at least. Yeah. Um, but you're like, you know, Veerskanth and Willalage, at some point they're going to prove out that they're good enough to play at the highest level, right? Um, which I think is quite unusual for almost any period of Shrunken cricket. Yeah. We've never had so much strength and depth, right? I think... On the field, they are trying in their way, even though we failed, to address the issue. So they knew intent was the issue. Yep. They misread, they mistranslated that in the first game against yep. South Africa, and then it kind of just fell apart against Bangladesh. They yep. like, there's no, I don't want to draw it too much. But the point is, is that they were kind of dealing with it. I mean, it's kind of like when something loads on your PC. Yeah, I feel we're like ninety percent loaded. Right, yeah. all the files have come down, but we need that yeah. to kind of fold to put it all in and to organize it. Right? Yeah, I think I feel that's where Shrunken Cricket's at at this point. 
right? I think yeah. it just needs that one figurehead at the top. It might be that Mahela comes back and looks after it, or Sanger comes back and looks after it. Um, though I'm not sure you'd be able to pull them out of their current jobs yeah. to do it kind of on a full time basis. Yeah. Right, right. I don't know whether it's you know uh, th- there's there's Schlunkens with lots of coaching experience, right? Right. Now, Someone like I, a, you know, I, a Kanda B, right? Like who, yeah, who has been in the ranks for a while, has been successful at the LPL, who everyone praises, right? You know, and honestly, I generally agree with your assessment there, Mark, that the bowlers, they're world class bowlers. Yeah. I think you have some batters who are very good. I think what's missing is when you bring a DDS, a Sidira, an Angela Matthews, a Shanika into the squad. They, to be honest, were square pegs for round holes, right? We talked about the middle overs. They were our tr- attempts to stop gap that solution. For me, right, part of filling that void, getting that last 10% is playing that high octane, high pressure brand of cricket at home, playing big matches all the time, right? And giving players... Rather than saying, okay, DDS, can you do this job? The answer is, well, we've seen him, and there's not enough evidence to say that he can do that job, right? This is the time in those next two years to give players chances, to give the new and Indo Fernandos chances to do this, to grow into a role, right, where he's still moldable, still shapeable, to give someone like Chamaka Karunaretne, right? We're, we're looking for someone who can bowl a few overs, right, and can hit with the bat. He certainly has the talent to do that, right? Why we should invest in him and we should back him and say, all right, this is your spot. Yes. You've had some lean patches, but you are the guy who can do that. Or Lahiro Samarakun, Moen Subasinga, right? Bring those guys in and around the squad who can fill those middle order roles to me. Right. That's the, the sort of trick is identifying those players who can actually do the job and backing them and having differentiated roles for them. That that's where I kind of see it going forward. I, I, um, think till they address that problem, they'll have issues beating the best teams in the world. I think they can, right? But that'll basically be on the back of someone like Kussel or Potham having a, a magical innings and the bowling peeling out. Till we get that that middle order clicking, I don't think I, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna get there. I think also it's a time to give some of these younger players a shot. Um, the Siobhan Daniels, right? The Cruz Boulets, see what they can do, see if they can adapt, see if they can find a place for themselves, make a make a spot in the team for them so that they can take it to the next level because we see that they have the skills. Um, I, th- I think Pat- Patton should be the template for that, right? Yeah. They put him in the side yep. and they just backed him and we've seen him develop now. He's been in the team for three years. You, almost, uh, what, series after series, you see him getting better and better yep. and better and better and better, right? Absolutely. Now we've seen him accelerate through the gears. That innings against Bangladesh will be forgotten because we lost it, but it was absolutely superb. Brilliant. It was brilliant. And that's what they should look at Siobhan Daniels. They should look at Cruz Pelé and be like, you two, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. The, the you know, the forgotten man in striking cricket is Avishka Fernando, right? Yeah. And he's had such a turbulent career because they did the exact opposite. You know, they dropped him in. He didn't make runs. You're out. Yeah. Right. They move him about. He's unsettled. He loses his head, and you know he he just can't get that kind of momentum in his career going because he's so f- he's he's paralysed by the fear of failure. Right. Yep. Um. And I think that the sad thing for me is with with in the way we lost our games is I think it brings that fear of failure back in, mm-hmm. um, because that's what you know. Schrunker is producing the best cricketers on the planet, and it has done for the last forty years. Right, and the only thing that ever stops us not being successful and not being the best team mm. in the world is when we get the psychology of the team wrong. Yeah, and and you know the boys the boys come in mentally under undercooked and underprepared, yeah. and I I feel you know when we talk about that ninety percent loaded. I think a lot of that, a lot of what we've been missing was the psychological element. Yeah, but a lot of the things we were getting right again is the psychological element. Right, yeah. our right. bowling attack strikes fear in batters' hearts. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm telling just... you, teams would not have wanted to play us in that Super yeah. 8, right? And, and you know, you, you're you right. We see parts of it, right? You, you 
you saw in that power play what Kussel and Potham did. Kussel went for, you know, not very many, but they were aggressive. They were pushing the tempo. They were really trying to score. Kamindu was trying to do the same thing, right? And that's the attitude. And then you can't just go back and say, all right, we're going to undo all of this and and revert to our old ways of doing things because that creates tension in the minds of the players. When you're a batter and you're making that split second decision, you need to know my plan is this. This is how I'm going to do it, right? That has to be drilled into you. And and that's why I can almost accept the South Africa loss. They lost going hard, right? It, yes, they misassessed the pitch, um, and that was a mistake, but at least when they were getting out, they were trying to score runs. And it said to me, okay, this is their template. This is how they hope to go about it. Okay. So we'll we'll go on and on and on about this over the next few weeks, but two small questions for you. Um, Biggest positive for Sri Lanka in this tournament? Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. That's why I asked it. I, I I think oh uh, because the problem is they're gonna rip it all up and start again. I was gonna say I I still really really back uh Patam and Kussel at the top. Yeah and I know I know a lot there's a lot of Shrunk fans who are not fans of Kussel Mendes. And obviously I'm not gonna tell people what they should or shouldn't believe, but I I think those two at the top have become a real handful now. Yeah. In both formats as well. Yeah. hundred uh, percent agree. Uh, we need to ride that because it's good in the, in the T20 format. We need to build around them. That, that to me yeah. is, is the I, thing. You, yeah. Yeah. I actually think Kamindu is that third brick Yeah, as well. And it, he needs it's time, right. Yeah. He needs time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we've got to understand that our new brand is high intent. Yep. So if he gets out in the in within the first five balls, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like, right? That's what we expect, right? That's 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 you know, either score or, or get the runs. And I think giving them the players underneath them who can continue that. Um, and hopefully I want to see Charith continue to step it up. I think he's taken a big leap forward in the one day game. I think that that T twenty mode he's still working on. Um, but again, more support around him will help that. Um, for me, big positive is Nuan Tushara. What a bowler he has been. Um, I did not expect him to be that good. I loved how they used him at the top, gave him three overs at the top. He swung the ball. He's at the batters. He's attacking them all the time. Um, I was surprised that Sri Lanka picked him ahead of Madhushanka and Shamira. And I thought he was, he was really brilliant and, you know, hats off to him, you know, last two matches against Bangladesh, he's taken nine wickets. That's a big time, big moment performance. So he is the big positive for me. Um, now, our final question. What do you think is going to happen in this game against the Netherlands, right? So it's basically a game for pride. It's a game to give us that third spot in the table. Um, what do you, what do you going to turn up? Yeah, go for it. Can I give you two options? I think we either yeah. hammer them or we get hammered. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think there's any, there's no there's no close like game here. No. I think it's hammer or be hammered. Yep. Um, yep. We're, we're either going to blow them out quickly, or yeah. it's going to be an ugly one. I think there's enough professional pride in that team that it won't be an ugly one. Yeah, and I mean the way like, they fought, even with subpar scores, right? That that speaks to me of. Um, and they're too good. They're too that like I I just want to be clear here. Even with a flame out, I think this is a very talented squad. I just think we we underestimate the margins and how how slim they are. Um, and, and maybe one thing we can talk about in the future: how do we convert bilateral play to tournament play? Right when the intensity gets ratcheted up, when the pressure gets ratcheted up, that next level. And this maybe gets to your psychological point, right? How do we create that winning psychology at the highest level in tournaments when everything matters and everything's on the line? Uh, we hire Ravi Shastri. That's the only <laughs> way, Dom. <laughs> All right. So this has been tough for me. I'm sure it's been tough for Mark. It's always <clears throat> tough dissecting and see now Mark's, Mark's uh, you know, he, he, he's, he, he's physically ill 
from talking about this. But um, if you've had a listen, give us a like, give us a subscribe, follow us, um, recommend us to your friends. And we will be back, rain or shine, win or loss, after this Netherlands game. And also be on the lookout for a preview pod of a very, very important series between the Sri Lankan women and the West Indian women coming up later this week. Can I just say one thing before we leave, Dom? I still think Sri Lanka are going to win a World Cup this year. All right. Mark puts it on the uh, on the spot. 2024 Women's World Cup in Bangladesh coming up. We will have that covered for you. Estelle Vasudevan is going to be on the ground, which is going to be amazing. Um, and we are really, really excited for that. Thank you. That's been the Morally End. Bye. <laughs>